all doing well. All right, let's take a look at Unit 6, Part C, Part 1 notes. This is stuff that we've already covered in class last week, but I'm making this video for those of you who are absent or anybody that wants to review it. Uh, this deals with sections 17.1, 17.2, 4 to 17.7 in the text, which you should be reading. All right, so this is no different than any other equilibrium problems, except we're dealing with slightly soluble salts in this section. And instead of Kc or Kp, or Keq or Ka or Kb, we're dealing with Ksp. It stands for solubility product constant. So solubility um, is defined in terms of grams per 100 milliliters of water that dissolve. So what we call soluble is anything greater than this threshold. And things that we had said before that were insoluble aren't really completely insoluble. They're just slightly soluble. And solubility is so low that they generally don't produce many ions at all in water. However, this is uh, an important concept to cover, to understand the degree of solubility, and that's what this KSP business is all about. So uh, a slightly soluble salt actually will undergo a dynamic equilibrium uh, to produce hydrated ions. For example, um, if you mixed AgNO3 plus NaCl, you'd get a precipitate AgCl plus NaNO3. Now this is not completely insoluble, it's just slightly soluble now. So as soon as it's formed, there are no ions that are generated. However, a dynamic equilibrium is reached until the solution is saturated. Once the equilibrium is reached, we say the solution is saturated. Uh, the equilibrium constant, Ksp, is no more than the product of the ions in solution. So for that saturated Na or AgCl solution, we can write an equation. You take the precipitate that's formed, AgCl, you always write the solid on the left and you dissociate it into its aqueous ions on the right. This is the equation. Everything in this section is going to work this way. Solid on the left, ions on the right. And remember when we write our equilibrium constant expression, we only include aqueous ions or gases when we're dealing with Kp. However, here you see that the solid does not end up in our equilibrium expression. Same as before. Again, coefficients always become exponents. This works like every other equilibrium constant expression we've worked on. Okay, so you can pause the tape Pause your video and try these problems in exercise one. Okay, now that you've completed them, let's look at the answers. If we want to write the equilibrium expressions for each of these reactions. Here are our calcium ions, the concentration of your fluoride ion, and the coefficient becomes the exponent. For the next one, you have your silver ions, coefficient becomes the exponent, chromate, and for the last one, calcium ions and oxalate C2O4 minus 2. It's a one-to-one -one ratio. Easy peasy. Molar solubility. Remember stoichiometry? Well, we're going to be using it a little bit, just in terms of mole ratios. 
Molar solubility is simply the amount of solute in moles that can be dissolved in a specific amount of solvent. And our value will be in moles per liter. It's going to be a molarity. And we can calculate this using the KSP value and stoichiometry. For example, if we want to calculate the concentration of each ion as well as the KSP for um, lead chloride, given the molar solubility, we just write out our equation PBCL2. And you can set up a rice box. You'll see you might not have to do this, but I like to just mindlessly write my, set up my rice box. Who cares about the solid? Now notice the stoichiometry here. Because the coefficient is 1, it's going to be S. Instead of X, like in the last unit, we're just going to use S. It's just a different variable. It's going to help you to remember that it stands for solubility, molar solubility. And because the coefficient is 2 for chloride, it's going to be 2s. So we have s and 2s. All right, let's write our KSP expression. Now, in order to solve for KSP, we're going to need these ion concentrations. Well, we have a very important piece of information that tells us the S value, molar solubility is S. When you hear the word molar solubility, think S. So then we have S is 0 0.016, and that would be the lead ion concentration. 0 0.016. And your chloride ion concentration is 2s. So we get 2 times 0 0.016. And when it's in the expression, don't forget to square. So we know each concentration now. We can find the KSP. And we just plug and chug. Our KSP value is 1.64. 10 to the negative fifth. No units there. If you'd like to pause the video and try this next problem on your own, go ahead, give it a whirl. If not, whatever, just keep watching. All right, so we're given the molar solubility of calcium phosphate is 1.1, so that's S equals 1.1 times 10 to the negative seventh molar. Wants to know what's the concentration of each ion in the saturated solution. And finally, what is the KSP? So let's fill in our rice box. Who cares about the solid? Zero, zero. Notice the coefficient is three. So it's plus three S and then we have plus two S, three S and two S. The calcium ion concentration going to be 3s, so it's 3 times 1.1 times 10 to the minus 7th. That's going to be 3.3 .3 times 10 to the minus 7th molar. And your phosphate ion concentration is 2s, so it's 2 times 1.1 times 10 to the minus 7th. That's 2.2 times 10 to the minus 7th molar. Now we've got enough to write our KSP expression. So for KSP, so for KSP, now we can go one step. That's going to be 3s cubed. It's going to be 2s squared. We know what 3s and 2s are, so we can go ahead and plug that in. Two 
2s was 2.2 sine 3 minus 7 squared. The KSP value is 1.74 times 10 to the minus 33rd. Now, what does the magnitude of that value tell you about the solubility? That's way less than 1, which means equilibrium lies far to the left. There's very little aqueous ions in solution. So this is a very, very slightly soluble salt. If you'd like to pause the video and try exercise three on your own, you can go ahead and do that. If not, keep watching. Let's take a look at exercise three, calculating the KSP. Given the molar solubility, which is your S value, all right, so we want to write our expression BI two S three. So I'm going to write, set up our rice box and do the equilibrium expression. Cares about the solid. That's plus two s, three s, and we have two s and three s. So your K S P equals concentration over bismuth times the concentration of the sulfide. Okay, and if we plug in 2s squared 3s cubed, right, we can solve for KSP. It's going to be 2 times 0 0.0 times 10 to the 15th. All of it squared times three S all that cubed. Then your calculator and you get one point one times ten to the negative seventy third. That's a small number. All right, we can work the other way now. If we're given the KSP, we can find the molar solubility in moles per liter and then in grams per liter. So let's look at this example. If we want to calculate the KSP for calcium carbonate, just like every problem before, we're going to write our equilibrium. Set up the rice box. Who cares about the solid? That's plus S, plus S, S, S. The KSP expression is going to be your calcium ion concentration times your carbonate ion concentration. Your KSP is going to be equal to S times S. And basically, that's S squared. So you have 3.8 times 10 to the negative 9 equals S squared. Solve for S, and you get 6.16 times 10 to the negative 5th molar. That's your molar solubility. It's the solubility in moles per liter. That's part A. Part B.
we do want to get it in grams per liter. So let's take that 6.16 times 10 to the negative fifth. That means moles per one liter. We want to get it into grams per liter. So we want to cancel out of moles, get into grams. We know the molar mass is about 100-ish, 100.1 grams per mole. Moles cancel. And you get 0 0.00617 grams per liter as your solubility. Comparing solubilities using KSP values um, can be a little bit tricky. To really compare solubilities, you must compare the S value. The only time you can use the KSP to compare relative solubilities is if the salts or the slightly soluble ionic compounds have the same ion-ion ratio. For example, which of the following compounds is least soluble? So when you're asked to compare molar solubility, think S. Notice all of these salts have the same ion ratio. Look, manganese, there's one of them. Carbonate, there's one of them. Let's say one to one, cation to anion ratio. Copper and sulfide, one copper, one sulfide. Let's say one to one. Cadmium and sulfide, one to one. Lead and sulfide, one to one. So when we're looking at compounds that have the same ratio of cations to anions, we can look directly at the KSP value. The one that is least soluble will be the one with the lowest KSP. The lower the KSP, the lower the solubility. If the ion ratios are the same, we don't have to necessarily look at the S values here. So this is the more convenient of the two types of problems. However, what happens when the ion ratios are not the same? If they're not the same, you cannot look directly at the KSP value. If you did, and we were looking for the most soluble, right? and we'd look for the highest KSP value, well, it looks like cadmium carbonate has the highest KSP. But it turns out this is not the compound with the greatest solubility. We have to look at the S value. So hopefully at this point, you can see that anything with a one-to-one -one ratio has a KSP expression that's S squared, a one to two ratio, KSP will be four S cubed. Now, if you have to write, set up a rice box and write your equilibrium expression to see this, go ahead and do it. If you have a one to one, KSP S squared, if you have a one to three, then your KSP is going to be 27 as to the fourth. Solving for S, given those KSPs, is what you need to do for this problem. If we're looking for the greatest solubility, then we're looking for the largest S value, and it happens to be cadmium hydroxide. Our next problem deals with calculating molar solubility and solubility in grams per liter. If you'd like to stop the video and try this on your own, go ahead and give it a whirl. If not, keep on watching. All right, so we're given a KSP. We want to find the S value first. We're going to set up our equation. Set up a rice box. Two pairs of solid. X plus A. 
S, S to S, S to S, KSP expression, maybe your copper ion concentration, your iodate ion concentration, and this equals S times 2S squared. So remember, if we're calculating molar solubility, think S, we're solving for S, we're given a KSP, 1.4 times 10 to negative 7 equals S times 2S squared. Let's just walk through the algebra. 2S squared is 4S squared, which equals 4S cubed. So now we have 1.4 times 10 to the negative 7th equals 4S cubed. Divide both sides by 4. And you get 3. Point five times ten to negative eighth. If you raise that to the third power, that will be your S value. And that equals three point three times ten to the negative third. That's in moles per liter. Now if you multiply that by the molar mass, which I gave you. You can get the solubility in grams per liter, and that equals 1.36 grams. Well, I hope this helps.